Did you know that aside from being the Prime Minister of Great Britain, Winston Churchill was also known for being exceptional at something else? Yes, Winston Churchill was also a painter. Hi, and welcome to Woe History. In today's video, I will be showing you another side of the great Winston Churchill, apart from his leadership exploits. Before we continue, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos like this. Click on the bell icon to get notified of new videos immediately. What are we waiting for? Let's get started! Winston Churchill is popularly known for guiding Great Britain through the Second World War. He could give motivational speeches, and even when things were tough, he was known to never surrender. But apart from these amazing leadership qualities, Winston Churchill was also a very accomplished painter. Churchill once wrote in one of his books, Painting as a Pastime, that painting came to his rescue in his trying times. Painting was a source of delight to him, and he eventually had more than 550 paintings to his credit. He also said that painting helped him improve his memory, observation, and eyesight. Churchill gave the order to invade Turkey's Gallipoli in May 1915. However, it went terribly wrong, and as a result of this, his political career went quickly downhill. Churchill was also demoted from his position as First Lord of the Admiralty. He later left his position with the government and joined the army as an officer. It was during that low time that he took up painting as a new hobby. After leaving the Admiralty, Churchill developed his amateur painting skills and started using the alias Charles Morin. Throughout his lifetime, he pursued this hobby and produced hundreds of paintings, many of which are on display in the Chartwell Studio as well as in private collections. In his book, Painting as a Pastime, Churchill recalled his first painting attempt. He painted a faint blue splash of paint on his canvas out of dread and intimidation. He feared the blank canvas in front of him. He was attempting to paint the sky, but was interrupted by the arrival of Glasgow painter Sir John Lavery and his wife, Hazel. Hazel asked him why he was hesitating while painting. She took a brush in her hand and painted the canvas with bold blue strokes. Following suit, Churchill snatched the biggest brush and began to paint with a crazy intensity. He said he never again feared a canvas. Churchill's approach to painting was very simple. Go outside and paint what you see. He set up his easel outdoors to capture the grounds of his country home in Kent, Chotwell. Some of his paintings were done during his travels to Egypt, Italy, Morocco, and the south of France. Though Churchill favored the outdoors, he also tried his hand at still life and portraits. Churchill's works illustrate his favored travel destinations, holidays, and family members. Churchill taught himself how to paint. He used bright blues and greens, ripe reds, oranges, and yellows the most, because brilliant colors made him happy, as he often turned to painting to improve his mood. In 1943, Churchill created an artwork during the Second World War when he was on a trip to Marrakesh with U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt. It was the only picture he painted during the war. His work was later given to Roosevelt as a remembrance of their time together. Churchill's artwork also inspired several people to gain an interest in the painting hobby. Dwight D. Eisenhower, an American president, was so taken by Churchill's paintings that he decided to try the hobby for himself. He even set up a studio in the White House. Former President George W. Bush also liked to paint, and recently he credited Churchill's book, Painting as a Pastime, for inspiring him to take up painting as a hobby. However, unlike his writing, Churchill was always nervous about showing his artwork publicly, or even to friends. In 1921, Churchill's paintings were first displayed at an exhibition in Paris under the alias Charles Morin, or Charles Morin. In 1947, at the request of the President of the Royal Academy of Arts, Sir Alfred James Munnings, Churchill sent them two paintings under another alias, David Winter. Although Churchill was hesitant about his paintings, their popularity increased with time. Churchill continued this hobby into his old age, painting over 500 pictures of subjects such as his goldfish pond at Chartwell and the landscapes and buildings of Marrakesh. He sold some of his works, but he also gave many of them away as gifts. In 1959, President Eisenhower displayed Churchill's paintings in the US. About half a million visitors watched the display as it traveled across the country and onto Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Later, Churchill was also named an honorary academician of the Royal Academy of London. Churchill's artworks were not particularly revolutionary, but his paintings do remind us of the great joy that painting can bring to a man 
even when he is going through the darkest of times. That will be all for now. I hope you enjoy the video. Do you think Churchill performed as well in painting as he did in leadership? Drop your remarks in the comments below. Want to see your favorite historical person, place, or thing featured in future videos? Drop them down in the comments, and you will see them soon. Click the thumbs up button to let me know you enjoyed this video. Also make sure to click on the subscribe button to get more videos like this, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any updates. Thanks for watching Woe History. See you soon!